So this video is on problem 105 and on 105 we're asking about whether or not so William thinks that the hypotenuse must be the longest side of a right triangle Chad disagrees who is correct okay um so in an example let me just grab a triangle and I'm going to hold shift when I hold shift it's going to um make the triangle be a right triangle. Okay, so it's gonna be 90. And I'm gonna to try to do like a 30, 60, 90 one here. Hold on, let me get my 30. Okay, about a, oops, I erased it. About a 30, 60, 90. Okay, so in this situation, here's my right angle, and here's my right angle, and that is going to be 90 degrees. My other two angles, as you saw, this one was a 30 degrees, this one is a 60 degrees. When you're looking at this, what you will notice is my shortest angle, my 30 degrees across from it is my shortest side. Now, what happens is my hypotenuse is gonna always be across from my right angle. In a right triangle, 90 degrees is the biggest angle. So that means that since the 90 degrees is the biggest angle, this has to be the longest side. And if I was to like physically measure it, you're gonna see that it is longer than the side across from the 60. Okay, the side across from the 60 would be over here. So by the triangle inequality um, theorem, um, the longest side is across from the largest angle. Okay, I can always, always, always. And 90 degrees, the right angle is always the biggest angle in a right triangle, always, always, always. So the hypotenuse has to be the longest side. So the hypotenuse, which is across from your right angle, has to be the longest side. And on 107D, on 107D, the perimeter would be us adding up all the way around. Okay, so, and you probably had more of a question on the area, but perimeter, I've got 10, I've got 10, so that's going to be 20. Um, I've got four and four, so I'm going to add another eight. I have um, two and two, so that's going to be a four. I have three here, so I'm going to have a three. And then I also have this, which is 23. Add all of those up that will be your perimeter. Okay, so you just need to add those numbers up. Now, for my area, um, what I'm gonna do is I am gonna think about this as a trapezoid. So if I was to draw if I was to draw 
my trapezoid and I'm going to go straight across this. Okay. I know I do not have this piece here. Let me do it in a different color. I know I do not have that piece there. Okay. I am missing this rectangle here. Let me do that a little thinner. I don't know why it's so fat. I'm missing that rectangle. So what I'm going to do is basically I am going to take the area of my trapezoid and I am going to minus the area of my the area of my rectangle. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. So the area of my trapezoid, the formula for the trapezoid is going to be base one plus base two added up times the height divided by two. So it's half of your two bases added up times your height. Okay, that's what the area is. So going across the top here, I've got my four plus I have my three plus I have my four. So that is going to be 11. Plus going across the bottom, I have my 23. And then my height is this perpendicular eight divided by two. So when I do that math, 11 plus 23, I get 34 times eight divided by two, I get 136. So the area of my trapezoid was 136. So I'm going to have 136 minus the area of this rectangle, which is going to be six because it's two by three. So minus six. So my area, my area of my whole entire shape is going to be 136 minus six, which is 130 square feet. Hopefully that helps you out.